So uh, today I'm going to be building a rail because I don't see too many online. Well, there is online ones, but they're like homemade rails, which I guess this technically is a homemade rail, but it's a real metal rail that would actually be suitable to put on the mountain or in your backyard, which I'm going to do. But uh, anyway, so I'm going to build a rail around 12 feet long. Uh, it's made out of 4x4, four 8-inch four, wall tubing. 8 inch wall tubing, if you didn't hear that because the hammer dropped. Uh, it's a little rusty, it's been sitting around a little bit and it got a little wet, so I'm cutting off most of the rust, surface rust, but I'll, I'll grind it all smooth and then give, her, give it a coat, coat of black paint. But uh, that's the material. I have the feed material here. It's actually holding up the, the rear end because I'm getting ready to cut it, which I'll show you. I have it all lined up and ready to cut and I'll move the camera in so we've got to cut. But it's going to be a 12 foot rail. Just a side note, you're, if you have a truck, usually truck boxes are anywhere from 6 feet to, to around 8 feet. No more, no bigger than 8 feet. So you can usually stick 4, four feet out the back end of it without getting in trouble and have a, black, a red flag on it. So I'm going to go 12 feet and then that way I can carry it. And it's not too heavy and I can still... Still put it in the truck and take it, take it to somewhere else if I want to go somewhere else. But anyways, I'll, uh, I'll move around here with the camera and I'll show you what I'm about to cut. So actually, I'll come around here. So I lined it up, I put the line up. I used the square. You don't really have to put a square on it, but uh, I put the square on it. And you can use chalk or... Uh, marker. I like marker better. I have chalk though. Chalk does work. It's pretty good stuff, but uh, I don't know. I just like the this and using the square. It's just a lot faster. But anyways, I did it all the way around because I don't think my blade is... It's a new blade, but it's not deep enough. It's not going to cut all the way through. But uh, I lined it all up, so... It's pretty lined up there, as you can see. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're not... Uh, this isn't... Like, it doesn't have to be perfect, but close enough is what we're getting at. And then I do have some ends that I've already cut from some other material, which actually I cut it, I think I cut it from this material itself for something else, but the other ones are stacked under here, the ones that don't have the seam. And those are gonna be my end plates. But that's, that's the material. As you can see, it's relatively long. And uh, it's four by four. The thickness of the sidewall is pretty thin, but I think it'll be all right. I'm not going crazy, so it'll be all right. It's already heavy as it is, so. But it's four by four, one eighth. Uh, I'm gonna set the camera up for cutting, and uh, let's get to it. But the things you're gonna need is a welder, uh, a hand grinder which I have one over here. It's just plugged in over here. Uh, various different grinding pads, whatever you like, I guess. Uh, welder, I think I said. Cut off saw, you can put a cutting blade on the grinder and use it too, it just takes a little bit longer. I like the cut off saw. Make sure you have glasses on at all times. You're not really supposed to have these dangling around, but I'll tie it up here, I guess, just to be safe. And I like to do this up. Safety first, always. I like to, to keep my fingers and my body parts, my skin. I almost forgot to have a tie. Shoelace. Alright. Uh, I'm going to put gloves on. This is. When you cut the metal, it gets hot and. I always end up touching the metal. Although these gloves got a hole in them. Not the best. Let's let's go to town. Uh, I'll turn the sound down, it's gonna be loud, there's gonna be sparks. Alright, so uh, as you can see. bottomed out before I could get through. 
Oh wait, I think I can maybe I can get through a little bit. I'm like the tiniest little bit through, but I'm just hitting there, so that kind of sucks. But it's no big deal. You probably should have a face shield, but I don't have a face shield. And I've, I've done this stuff for years, so. Uh, it's probably not the safest, but what can I say? Don't do what I do. Just uh, do what I say, use a face shield. You won't forget, regret it. Yeah, so, yeah, so I, almost, I almost got most of it through there. We like to get it in line. Oh, too much. There you go. That looks pretty good. Just so we're lined up here. Put your thing back on. Aha, see? I put it out of alignment there. If the thing wasn't so long. It wouldn't be so hard. There you go. That's what I want. A little, a little tap. And then uh, we're just going to cut it again. <coughs> oh. Well, I didn't get all the way through. I guess I should have flipped it more than once. That's okay. Flip it a second time here. We'll get the cut. We're back after a little stumble there. The GoPro fell off. That's okay. Uh, so, everything's cut. Or, uh, this is all I had left. Just a foot. Twenty inch, twenty and a quarter inches. Just under two feet. Uh, I could use these for feet, foot feet material. Anyways, I gotta get this down. And get the camera back to where it should be. All right. So the seam is right there. That's going to be the bottom. So this is what you want to use the chalk for. Just a label, it's the top. And these are my end caps, which I guess I could theoretically put in put it next. I bet as well, I guess. I was gonna use this as leg material, but do that second, so. Uh, I don't know, we'll see here once we get all set up. to do. So I'm going to weld these ends on. Doesn't really matter which ones. Just going to weld it on like that and it'll look, look better, look cleaner once it's all done. So I just gotta find somewhere to set the camera up. 
so you guys can kind of watch. Now, I'm not a welder, but I took a couple welding courses and my dad's a welder, but I might, I might be going the wrong way. I can't remember if you're supposed to weld. All right. So I put a new tip on the welder and everything's sorted out, I think. Now that my welds look like crap over here, but I'm gonna grab them smooth anyway, so. That wasn't too bad of a weld. Now, in theory, I shouldn't be welding it that, like, see how hot that is? But, I don't think I'm gonna have any issues with warpage. Oh, man, this thing is a couple, couple of tight. There we go. But anyways, what I was saying was, you don't need to weld it that crazy quick because it just heats up and it wants to warp but I don't think I'll have this will probably end up warping I'm not too worried though it's uh it's just for just to seal it off yeah see it's too hot right there already I'm just blowing holes through the material So, we'll just let it cool off, and uh, I'll weld the rest of it. Uh, let's see what we got here. Yeah, it's just it's too hot, and there's a bit of a gap here. Definitely working that bottom plate. So, what I ended up doing there, there was a little bit of gap, so I had to fill it in with the water. But we're gonna do the same thing to this one. She's hot, buddy. Woo, maybe I'll cool that down a little bit. I usually have a bunch of water, but it looks like I left it outside. That's okay. I live in Canada, so it's winter here. Anyways, we'll weld the last little bit up here. 
and then uh, I'll grind it smooth and I'll show you what it turns out like. Anyway, so uh, I'm just going to grind it smooth now that I weld at the end of it. So I gave it a little chamfer there, and the better your welds are, obviously, the cleaner it's going to be better for grinding, so. We'll see what the other side holds for. That weld was a little not not uh, not too nice, but it's all right. It came out okay. It'll be covered up by paint. What I need to clarify here is that I'm not grinding away the welds. I'm just grinding the welds smooth. Now. I had a little bit of room in between the plate and this steel where the weld filled it in. Filled it in. Now, if my plate was flush all the four sides all the way around, that would be a little. I'd be grinding more of the weld away that way. But now the the I filled in a good little corner chunk all four way around, which uh, which filled in with weld. So I'm not grinding weld away, which I technically am, but I'm really just smoothing out the weld as you can see. I only touch it for a good two minutes, maybe five minutes at most, as you can see. So all I'm doing is just cleaning up the edges so you just, they just don't catch anything. I want my rail to be buttery smooth so uh, the bottoms of my skis don't get all tore up just because I didn't grind the weld off. You don't want that. So as you can see, there's little divots in my welds, but it doesn't matter. It's not structural. I'm not a, I'm not a welder by profession, so they look pretty good. Everything seems pretty smooth. Not, it's really hot, so make sure you got gloves on. But uh, there's the end. So there's there it is capped. And now you got now you got a cap. So see, there's some divots in there, but that's no big deal. This isn't structural. This is just to go outside and ride with your skis. So there's that seam I was talking about. That's going to be on the bottom. And you don't want that. The seams, I think it, it's kind of a divot, but it does, a, does race up a bit. But main, main idea is just make it smooth. Make sure you're not going to catch any of your edges on just some, some little thing. Like right here, there's a little weld splatter. I'll have to grind all that stuff off, but I'm gonna grind the whole rail down before I paint it. And uh, anyway, so there's there's part of it. I'll come back and finish the rest of it tomorrow. Anyways, there you go.